Sometimes the yacht brokers ask me how I find time to produce so much video content. And I answer that all of us spend a lot of time researching the market and researching what yachts are available for sale. I just convert that research into video format so that more people can benefit from it. Today's video is a great example of that. I have a client who's considering purchasing a yacht in the 30 to 35 meter size range. I know that it needs to be tri-deck. I also know that to date he's only ever bought brand new yachts and I've observed that he does like that kind of Italian styling. So I've made a market research to see what it is that I can suggest to him when I meet him later this year. Here's the result of that research and I'd be very interested to hear in the comment sections below what yachts you think I should be suggesting. The first yacht on my shopping list has to be Ferretti Custom Line's new Navetta 33. I was on board the new model at the Cannes Yacht Show last year and it really is a hard act to beat. The styling is so much more attractive than the previous model which, don't get me wrong, was a wonderful yacht. But a lot of people were turned off by her rather unusual looks. This new style comes from the same design studio, Zucan International in Rome but it's so much easier on the eye. Aesthetics are not the only consideration, of course. The Navetta 33 has a very well thought out layout. It's surprising how often you can visit a yacht of this size that has a huge master stateroom at the expense of the galley or a massive lounge, but a sacrificed master stateroom. The science of dividing spaces on a super yacht, even of this size, is very exact indeed. And I've always said that Zucon is one of the best in the business for this. Every area of this yacht is an acceptable size, whilst nothing really shouts out as being far bigger than you would expect on a 33 meter. The biggest improvement of all though is without a doubt the sun deck that must be at least twice the size of her predecessor. Ferretti have made a very strong statement that they've invested heavily in this model to reduce noise and vibration levels on board. But in any case, for any of my clients that are looking to buy a brand new yacht, I always put them in contact with a yacht surveyor with experience in that specific model so that he can take a close look at all of the technical aspects of the construction. For this particular model, I'd also recommend that he talks to Ferretti about building the yacht to meet MCA requirements. Now, MCA is a certification that relates particularly to the safety aspects of the construction. And although the yacht's perfectly safe to use for him and his family without MCA certification, nonetheless, it's very helpful if he ever wants to charter the vessel and also very useful when he comes to resell her. The most obvious comparison to the Ferretti Navetta 33 has to be the Bonetti 116 Mediterraneo. This is slightly longer at 35.5 meters compared with Ferretti's 33 meters, but with an almost identical beam, just two centimeters more on the Bonetti. Whilst I know that the shipyards don't appreciate me disclosing prices, and I want to respect that, I should say that this yacht is about 25% more expensive than the Ferretti, so it's worth digging into that to understand whether it has a higher level of standard specification and just how much more volume you do get for the extra two meters of length. She is a magnificent yacht though, benefiting from a very smart and useful forward beach area with a plunge pool. And while she appears to have a very similar interior layout to the Ferretti, she does seem to have a lot more deck space and also more space for tenders and watercraft. One of the benefits of buying from one of the bigger brands is that you can be pretty sure of what you're going to get in terms of quality and you can also be fairly sure of being able to resell it because there is a market demand for them. Also, it's worth considering that Bonetti and Ferretti between them have built thousands of yachts, which is a good indication that they offer a very good price to quality ratio. Sometimes captains and surveyors who've worked with the German and the Dutch shipyards have a tendency of criticizing the quality of Italian yacht builders, but it's worth noting that there is a notable difference in the prices between Italian yachts and their Dutch and their German counterparts. Quite honestly, if what you're looking for is to just enjoy your holidays on your yacht with your friends and your family in safety in the Med or in the Bahamas, 
Both Ferretti and Bonetti offer great solutions for this. But again, any client of mine that's buying any yacht at all will always be put in contact with a suitable yacht surveyor who really has a good look at the technical and safety aspects of the specific yacht that they're going to buy. For this particular client though, I'd like him to consider the option of buying a pre-owned yacht for the first time. The depreciation on a brokerage yacht is far less than that on a brand new production yacht. And what's more, if you find one that's one or two years old, it will have passed through that one to two year period when all the little snagging list and warranty items need to be resolved that can be quite inconvenient for a new owner. One yacht that I probably will present to this client is the 120 foot Moon and Yacht Crystal. A little larger than the other two yachts with a 37 meter length overall, this is a lot of yacht for the money and really does offer outstanding value. I want to visit this yacht myself before I discuss her with the client, so I plan to take a trip to Cannes so that I can give some honest feedback. On paper, she certainly does look very interesting. The interior spaces on board are significantly greater than on the other two yachts, but on first appearance she seems to lack the deck space of the other two yachts. Tender and water toy storage is good, space for a 5 meter tender and personal watercraft. She has a really lovely plunge pool in the center of the sun deck, but probably the most significant thing about this yacht over the other two is that she has one extra cabin with a total of six guest staterooms. Now as a broker, I can analyze and compare yachts all day long, but it doesn't really matter. What's important is the way that the buyer feels when he first sees the photographs and when he first sets foot on board the yacht. After all, a yacht purchase is a purchase of passion. First of all, the heart of the client has to be engaged, has to fall in love with the yacht. And then after that, the brain starts to work as you consider whether it's value for money or what else is available on the market. Now for that reason, my next step will be to send details of those yachts to the client and then to meet with him to see how he's reacted when he's seen the photographs, which of those yachts is the one that gets his heart racing. If you watched my video last week, you'll know that I'm preparing a webinar called Breaking Into Yacht Brokerage. I do receive so many requests from people who would love to become a yacht broker and to make it their career. From the outside, it appears such a difficult industry to get into, but it is achievable for anybody with determination and with the right strategy. So the webinar gives very detailed advice on what you need to do to get your feet on the first rung and to break into this industry. I have a feeling that some people will watch the webinar and then at the end of it conclude that it's just not for them because it does take work and time to become a yacht broker and not everybody is willing to put that time and that work into it. Honestly though, it's far better to spend a small amount to attend a webinar to discover that rather than moving your whole life to the south of France or to Fort Lauderdale and then become disillusioned after six months because it's just not working out. All good things are worth putting time and effort into to achieve. The Breaking Into Yacht Brokerage webinar will just help you to achieve it a little bit quicker and a little bit more efficiently. Next week's video will be about that very subject and there'll be a lot more details about the webinar itself. So make sure you don't miss that when it comes out next Monday. Also, if you think that I've missed out on any significant yachts that I should be suggesting to my clients, please do tell me about it in the comments section below.